Hi, and welcome to question nine of the 2022 paper one of the Leave and Start Ordinary Level Maths. As always, if you want to copy the notes I'm working off, just send me an email at shanetroy at gmail.com. And please like and subscribe to get access to more playlists. So question nine, let's take a look. And we're looking at statistics, maybe. Okay, our functions. Let's read through it carefully. So Brian buys a new car. Fair play. The graph below represents a model that can be used to predict the value of this car, and they're using the letter V to represent value, I guess, for the next number of years. So that's where the function notation is. So V of T, maybe V of time, okay, would be maybe how you might describe that. And this model assumes that the value of the car reduces or depreciates by a fixed percentage each year. Now, a fixed percentage would seem to be linear, but the percentage would be of the, the new value. So it's not quite linear, okay? So all our stuff, the equation of the line, aren't really helpful here. This has been described by a nonlinear model, okay? So you see it starts off at 30 grand and then goes down every year, 24 per grand, then down to maybe 19, then down to what looks like 15. So again, I'm guesstimating based on, on the graph. Now, part A, part 1, and I, I know from the marking scheme that this part 1 and 2 are worth only 5 marks. So, it's, it, I'm not sure why the, the marking scheme is so low. Usually, it's like 5 marks for each part, you know, for whatever reason, to fit the curve. Now, use the graph to write down V of 0. Okay, so the value at the 0, it, at, at basically when it was bought, the initial value of Brian's car, and V1, so the value after 1 year, so we looked at this already a second ago. So the value uh, when it was bought seems to have been 30,000. Okay, so let's try to write this in, 30,000. And then after one year, the value there seems to me to be 24,000. Now, part two then says, show that the value of the car will reduce by 20% in its first year, based on whatever this model is. So if I think there, well, look, the difference in the values was 30,000 uh, take away 24,000 gives me 6,000. Now, is 6,000 over the original 30,000 by 100? Question now, is that 20%? Okay, so if I bring up my trusty calculator, so 6,000 over 30,000 is equal to one-fifth, multiplied by 100 to get percentage, gives me 20%. Okay, so let's write that down. So it's equal to 20%. Now, I don't have much space there, but you could say verified or true or something in the affirmative that it is 20%. Now, let's see what the answer is on the next page. Now, I don't know why I have that, I have that five there. And I just paused the video to double check, so I actually had the answer gone off. Um, there was actually, this is, is part B has the one and two joined together. So part A is worth five marks, okay. Uh, a part one, and then A part two is worth five marks again, as, as you'd expect. Now, um, in part B, and we see part B, part one says, based on this model, Write a formula for V of T, the value of Brian's car after T years, in terms of the age of the car. Use the fact that the value decreases by 20% every year. Now, this is fairly tricky, this um, question. So, um, let's just read it again and go, based on this model, write a formula for V, T, or v of T. Now, I usually write the V of T like this. I find it can be confusing when the, the brackets are so big. It looks like it's V times T. But that T is just almost like a subscript, just telling you what value is going in. At the moment, we're looking for a general statement for any year. Okay, And then we might use that as specifically in maybe part two. So there is a formula here. And I'm going to bring over the maths tables real quick. OK. So in the contents, look, all the different sections here, this will be under financial maths, okay? When I click on that, I've got like compound interest, um, I've got like whatever, present value, whatever. 
But this one, depreciation, is the one that is useful to me here. So if I flick back to the actual notes here, okay, so that's, um, I forgot the noun already. F is equal to um, uh, the, the, the original value times one minus the interest rate to the power of, I suppose, time. Okay, now the, that's the final value, okay? So we don't want to actually work anything out here. I could say there that the value, that would that be equal to in function notation V of T, is equal to my um, original value of 30,000 times one minus, now the total interest rate is 20%, okay? Um, to the power of t. I don't. I don't know what t is. Now, that one is representing a hundred percent. Okay. Or if you think about it, twenty percent is twenty over hundred. Now, twenty over a hundred is the same thing as point two. So that ends up becoming. Um, I ran out of space there, but v of t is equal to thirty thousand times uh, one minus point two is zero point eight to the power of t. So apologies, it's gone over the edge there. I'll just go to the clean answer here. Okay, and that's it there. Now that's, again, the formula we used. Okay, so then in part two, now let's go back here and just use the, the blank screen. And as always, I'm kind of assuming that you're pausing this and having a go and then seeing if your answer matches up. If it does, you have this skill. Okay, um, if it doesn't, well then it's an indication that maybe we need to take a look at it in more detail. So part two say, says, hence or otherwise, okay, now I know the formula is here. So even if the one I've made up above is completely wrong, okay, so 30,000 by 0 0.8 to the power of t. Even if this is wrong and you use this correctly, you're going to get at least the attempt here, okay? If you use it the whole way through, you'll, you'll get the full 10 marks. You can't be penalized for the mistake. The mistake for here has been, it would have been penalized if it was wrong. So using this correctly. Um, so if you couldn't get this one, I just make up something. As long as you use the one you made up here, you declared as your answer in part one, it'll be accepted as fully correct. Now they tell us the price after four years. So my T is equal to four. So basically what's V of four? And all that is is everywhere I see a T, which is only one place, I put the four. Now that's a calculator job. Okay, so put to the calculator, and I came up with 12,288. Now, down here, I suppose I have a different way of doing it. We knew the value after one year was 30,000 uh, by 0.8, you have 24,000. The second year would be 0.8, so 80% of 24,000 gives 19,200. Then do it again for that figure, and then do it again for the fourth year, and you get the 12,288. Just a different way of doing it. Um, and uh, that's, there's no right or wrong. Whatever way it works best for you when you get to the answer is the best way, okay? So then um, 9C part one and two, this is the one I meant to earlier that I've been marked together for five, only five V marks. And it's the same graph. I've copied this in, I think, from the part A. Or maybe they've done it. It says here a different linear model. Okay, now linear models, the rate of change or the slope will always be constant. Okay. It assumes that the value of the car reduces by a fixed amount each year. The value of the car will also reduce by 20% in its first year, according to this model. Okay. It says, draw a line on the diagram passing through the first two points on the graph um, with whole number of values of t. So t is 0 and t is 1. Continue a line until it reaches the horizontal axis. Now, the horizontal axis is down here. Okay, now, even if you put a, an arrow saying horizontal axis, it might get you something. Um, so they're drawing a straight line through these two and then basically continuing on. So let's see, draw a line on the diagram above, passing through the first two points on the graph with whole number of values. Okay, it's just the first two points on the graph. Continue your line until it reaches the horizontal axis. That seems really easy. Now in the answer in the back, okay, so I've went through this point on this point, and then it's continued on. A linear model would be the same all the way along.
Okay. Now then part two says, hence or otherwise, estimate T, the age of Brian's car when its value would be zero. Okay, it's crazy. So after just reading off, right there, if the linear model is true, his car will be worthless after five years. Now, anyone who's ever owned a car, just, you know, cars don't become worthless after a certain number of years unless you crash them into a wall. Even then, they're scrappage, but whatever. We won't argue that point. So a linear model would seem on the face of it not to be very good, but that's the answer. So really easy, just lots of words. Might be hard to figure out what's going on in part one. Um, I'd have a tendency to overthink things and go, it must be harder, it must be harder, and then doubt myself. Sometimes, though, it, it is that, that easy. And you just have to go with it, um, even if your brain is telling you that maybe you know there's something going on here. And maybe put a mark at it, come back and check it later on, and see does your brain think the same thing if you have time at the end of the exam. Now, part um, D, part um, question nine says Ava buys a new car that has a price of nineteen thousand four hundred forty-five. So let's write that on the page and see so you can be make use of this number. It says she pays 30% of this price as a deposit. So sometimes it's useful to, for me anyway, to make sense of it and go, well, that's 30%, 9,445 by 30%, whatever that number is, that's her deposit. Then she makes plus repayments, okay? And they're saying there she makes 2,67 per month. Okay, so that's, there's 12 months in a year. So that'll be a yearly thing. And she does it for three years, so that's by three. So whatever that number is, is her repayments. And then she pays off a lump sum at the end. And they tell us that, that's 7389. That's it. Okay, I think so. All I have to do is do those calculations. So I think the answer here, I have them done. That's our deposit, 19,445 by 30% gives, gave me 5,833.5. Repayments were the two hundred six ninety seven by the twelve months, by the three years, gave me seven thousand five or seven thousand four hundred and fifty ninety two cents, and then the lump sum we were given, just have to add those three figures together, and that's what she paid for the car, okay, um, and that seems to be it. So decent enough to get the attempt. If you'd worked with seven three eight nine. Now question nine part E, a lot of words here. So Ava drives her car home from the garage a distance of 12 kilometers. So distance is equal to 12. Now it says she usually drives the journey at an average speed. Okay, so speed is equal to 60K per hour. Uh, on this day, there are roadworks, so her average speed is only 40K. So speed two is equal to 40k per hour. I won't get any marks necessarily for that, okay, because that's all given to me in the question. It says, work out the percentage increase in the time it takes Ava to drive home because of the roadworks. So that would usually be the difference over the original, divided by 100, is equal to my answer. So we need to know the difference in time Okay, now the, the classic equation here would be speed is equal to distance over time. Now we can rearrange that by, like, I could multiply there by time. I know that'll get rid of the time in the bottom, because I want time on its own. If I multiply it by time on the far side, I'll have to do it here. So I'd end up with T times S is equal to D. Now I want time, so I need to get rid of that distance. You can always get rid of something by dividing by it. If I do it one side, I have to do it both. I'd end up with time is equal to distance over speed. Okay. Now, we know that the distance is always 12. Now, I don't have much space here, but for this particular situation, that would be uh, the time is equal to 12 over 60, um, which I'll work out in a second. For the other side here, it would be time is equal to still the same distance over 40. Now I have two calculations there to do. So let me just bring the calculator up. Okay, so that's 12 over 60 is equal to 0.2. Okay, 
and 12 over 40 is equal to 0.3. So I think there we had 0.2 was the first calculation. So let me just record that, 0 0.2, and this one here was 0 0.3. So what's the difference? Well, 0 0.3 take away 0 0.2 gives me 0 0.1 over the original was was the 0 0.2, okay, multiplied by 100. And that should give me, that's a half, okay, give me 50%. Now, again, this is one of those questions I often get confused. Is it the 0.2 on the bottom or the 0.3? And this mightn't be very, I suppose, correct. I could have done it both ways, okay, and that would give me, I think, 33.3% recurring. Now, one of them is wrong, one of them is right. Let's say I had taught that this one was the correct one, and this was wrong. I might put a line through this. I never cross out, never tip X out, whatever. And I declare this man, I put a box around it and do whatever I want to do around it. Even though this is what I declared, if it's been marked as normal, then this would be ignored, and it would be assumed you just, like, the correct work is on the page, it's visible, so it should be graded, okay? And that would actually be given the marks. Now I'll have a cleaner on the next page. Okay, so I see here I've done the speeds and the distance over time. I've rearranged it. Some people learn these off, so it's the triangle. And then I've gone the time, the normal time was 12 over 60. Okay. Um, then the roadworks time was 12 over 40. I got my pint 2 and my pint 3. So the difference, okay, is pint 1 over the normal or original, whatever, is pint 2. Put the calculation into the calculator, I got the 50%. Tricky enough question uh, to problem solve. Remember, we're always aiming for this attempt. Okay, so try do something. Even, I suppose, potentially writing this down would have gotten the attempt. Should I just check the marking scheme there? And it doesn't say it on the actual marking scheme, but that doesn't, you know, the instructions at the marking conference could give an indication of what they do in that situation if somebody just wrote down the formula. Okay, if you see the speed, distance, time, you should probably not write it down. It's probably going to be useful. Okay, if not, you waste your time. But if it is useful, well, then you've given yourself a chance at problem solving it. Sometimes this kind of question, it's good to write things out, okay, like I did here, and just to try and make sense of it. Try and visualize the, the scenario that's happening, and it'll give you a, a fighting chance of being able to work a strategy to try and figure out the problem. Okay, so that's it for question nine. Okay, so see you on question 10. And as always, if you want to copy the notes I'm working off, just send me an email at shanetroy at gmail.com and like and subscribe to get access to more playlists.